Welcome to Cross Border Investing, where we look at investment opportunities across the continent. I'm your host, Tapo Mudiba. Today, we're focusing on Kenya's banking sector, and I'm joined in Nairobi by Daniel Kuyo from Kingdom Securities. Welcome, Daniel. Uh, just a quick question. In regards to banking, we know it's typically a leverage um, on how the general economy is doing. How has Kenyan banking been faring over the last few years? Well, we've seen uh, quite a huge shift towards um, a technology and innovation. So we've seen quite a number of banks um, uh, release mobile banking products or, and services. So we are, we are trying to see a shift away from uh, sort of a branch banking, the brick and mortar branches to uh, more of uh, mobile banking. And so they're, they're trying to reduce the number of people who are walking to the banking halls uh, to sort of uh, do their transactions from there and they're now transferring that to uh, agency banking and mobile banking as well. Is that really a function of uh, low banking penetration or is it a function of higher margins? What's, what's the incentive for the banks to, to go that uh, route? What they're, they're, one of the things uh, is that they're looking for is uh, transactional income. Um, majority of the income tends to come from uh, interest income and so uh, we, we are seeing uh, about, about the average is about 60 to 70 percent um, of, of uh, total income comes from um, interest income. So we are seeing quite a huge shift towards uh, gaining transactional income. We have quite a number of banks also um, saying that they want to, to increase that, that uh, percentage of non-interest income to about uh, 60 to 70 percent so that they stop relying on uh, interest income from loans and of course um, and, and uh, savings and, and, uh, and uh, treasury bills and bonds as well. Okay. And, and having looked at uh, certainly the operational performance of a handful of the Kenyan banks, they seem to be uh, making this migration into higher technology quite successfully. Yeah. Well, well, a lot of them are investing quite heavily, um, ha have quite huge uh, capex expenditures towards uh, technology. I think one of the things that is informing them is that they've seen that this is where the, the economy is moving towards and this is where the country is moving towards a more digital age, um, a more, um, you don't have to have a physical presence to interact with your, with your customer. There's a lot more uh, relationship that can be built from uh, an online platform. And so we have quite a number of banks also um, that interact with their, their clients also on Twitter and Facebook and answering client queries and, um, and uh, marketing their products as well from there. Um, okay, that, that's a, a good synopsis of the industry as a whole. If we dig a little deeper and start talking about some of the players, um, I know Equity Bank is one that you look at quite closely. Your thoughts on the business? Yeah. Well, I think for Equity Bank, they, they, they have been quite aggressive over the last few years in growing their business. Uh, one of the things that they have done is uh, shift uh, their, their um, focus from retail lending towards SME lending, and then um, also integrate uh, other business lines into their, into their um, top line. Uh, one of the things that they've done is that they've signed up quite a number of uh, card vendors like MasterCard, um, and American Express. And this is one of the ways that they, they are viewing to grow their income. They've noticed that quite a number of people uh, drive their transactions through their cards uh, rather than paying cash. And so this is one of the avenues that they're looking at. Also, a second thing for Equity Bank is um, recently they've been issued a one-year license to, um, uh, to, to go into mobile, uh, to, to issue a mobile telephone network okay. and uh, as, a, as a mobile virtual network um, and called Equitel. And so we are seeing them shift towards that and pump quite a number of, uh, pump quite a huge sum of money in towards moving that uh, product and service. I think that what they are, they are tending to see is that they want to have a more holistic bank that offers uh, a lot more uh, value add from, from, for their consumers rather than just have, uh, have uh, the traditional products like mortgage, mortgages, uh, savings accounts, uh, current accounts as well. And Daniel, does this specifically mean that from a cash flow perspective, a lot of money has gone into CapEx as well um, as they've looked to ramp up the different divisions? Um, is, is that what we're seeing in terms of an operational performance from, from Equity Bank? Yes. Uh, we, well, we, we, we're actually waiting on the third quarter results to sort of view um, what the, the effect of the, the recent CapEx expenditures into, into the, the mobile virtual network uh, spent out into. And then also uh, we probably, they're, they're in the middle of a restructuring period. So they have uh, the McKinsey consultants 
are coming into the organization to sort of have a restructuring uh, process going on. And so I think probably from their quarter three results, we'd, we'd probably have a, a much clearer picture on to how um, the cap expenditure and um, what their thoughts are going forward for, for their expenses and even, even for how they're going to grow their revenues. Okay. Um, is this a, a bank that, that you certainly look at and, and are quite bullish in terms of the outlook, um, given all the different areas that they, they're involved in right now? Um, I mean, yeah. by going, judging by quarter two's results, uh, operational performance was uh, pretty good, uh, to say the least. Um, yeah. Good return on equity profile. Is this a, a bank you'd be looking at going forward? Yes, I would definitely be looking at, at equity bank uh, going forward. Um, I, I remain... Um, optimistic on, on, uh, on their performance, uh, even in the medium term. I think one of the things that they have done is that they've managed to keep uh, their brand alive within, uh, not just the media, but even within the general population. Uh, one of the things that has got a lot of people excited is, of course, their, their mobile virtual network. And a lot of people are uh, having this uh, wait and see approach to see what new products and what new services are they coming up with that, uh, that could probably match their competition, and what other things could they come up with that could give them a, a competitive advantage in the market right now? Um, so the good story coupled with valuations, does this mean this is one that you'd be um, advising people to maybe take a closer look at right now? Yes, I would, I would, uh, I would advise people to, to probably take a, a look at equity. Uh, quite strong uh, return on, uh, on equity and return on assets as well. Okay. Uh, they pro they're probably ranking uh, th third or fourth within uh, the, sec the num uh, counters that we cover. Um, and uh, I think that even going forward, they, they've, they've managed to hold their cost to income ratio at a, at, a, at a lower rate than what the sector is right now. And so even going forward, I think that they'll be able to maintain that even as they have uh, a higher capex um, and even uh, operational, uh, they face operational pressure go going forward with, with their, this new investment. Okay. Um, it sounds like they're doing interesting things and exciting things. Uh, any other players within the industry that, that you'd want to highlight and, and talk about? I think that uh, one other counter that I would be able to look at is uh, KCB. Um, KCB and, and uh, Equity ha have, have played a neck-to-neck -neck game uh, over the last few years. And we've seen uh, KCB also respond to what Equity has done by coming up with their own product called uh, KCB M Banky. And what it does, it's a, it's a mobile-based platform that allows you to open your account, uh, save, have savings, um, borrow money as well, and uh, pay over, over through your phone into different outlets. And so we are seeing a lot, a, a, a much, um, we, we are seeing them sort of play uh, a, a sort of catch-up role to what Equity Bank is doing. But they're not that uh, intent on uh, getting to the level that equity is in. I think that they are following their own strategy towards growing the business that they already have uh, rather than looking towards um, what uh, equity is doing through uh, SME lending, uh, which is their main uh, or which is their core platform of lending. Okay. And, and where is their key focus area? Um, you, talk, you touch on they're not really looking to, to focus on SME lending. Is, are they more uh, retail focused than, than equity bank? Yes, they, they, they've, uh, they've tended to be more of a retail um, outlet than they have been, uh, than, than what equity is. Also, another thing is that they've, that they've also grown other business sectors as they have. They, they tend to be a more wholesale bank, uh, so they have a mortgage, um, an, a mortgage arm that is quite uh, competitive within the market right now. I think that the number one market leader, um, they, they also have a lot of government and parastatal accounts that they manage and they have tended to um, be uh, more concentrative on towards uh, this, uh, growing these accounts uh, that have the government and they have the, the parastatal accounts uh, to, towards growing those accounts. Um, even going forward, they, they've laid a lot of concentration towards that. And also the, the retail arm that they have been. Uh, the mobile banking platform is mainly uh, towards the retail arm. And uh, so they've, they've tended to concentrate towards that and the parastatal arms as well. Daniel, if I may ask, the, you know, one of the things you've talked about is, is the mortgage arm. How's the, the uh, bad debt profile of these banks? Um, uh, certainly one of the key areas that investors look at around the globe is really not so much how 
things look like uh, when times are good, but what, what uh, the profile looks like in, in times of uh, economic stress. So, so what, what does uh, that, that bode for investors and in specifically KCB? Well, for KCB, um, when you look at, at, at their lending, at the, at the NPL ratios, they, they seem to be quite uh, high at the moment, right? What has, what has happened is uh, um, the government had delayed in paying contractors earlier on um, in, the second, in the second and the third quarters of this year. The, the, the government had delayed in paying uh, quite a number of, of contractors that they had, um, had, they had on their payroll. And what this had done is that it had delayed also payments to loans that um, KCB had given out to, to, to these contractors. So the NPLs had uh, sh uh, faced quite some upward pressure in the, in the second, first and second half of this year. Uh, I think I opine that in the third quarter, we'd probably see a, a downward trend in it. And in the fourth quarter as well, as the government has released quite a number of um, funds to cater towards this. Uh, also, what has helped is um, because of the proceeds from the infrastructure bond uh, and the, uh, the euro bond that the government issued uh, later or earlier on this year, we've had quite, a number, quite, quite some liquidity within um, the country. And so we're expecting quite a downward trend within the NPLs, uh, not just for KCB Bank, but for, for the whole sector. Okay. as well uh, and specifically i guess uh, kcb um given the backdrop given that they you know their focus is a little bit more on on the retail aspect than than smes um the increase in, mm -hmm. in non-performing loans uh is this one that you are as bullish as you were on equity bank i think i would be more conservative on kcb than i was on uh, on uh, on equity bank i think for for kcb what remains to what remains a, a, a sort of a red flag um, or sort of a cautionary statement for me is uh, the, the, the growth of the NPLs um, because they, they choose to concentrate a lot more on, um, on the retail lending arm. Um, this has tended to be where their, their asset uh, book is, is uh, placed. And so we, we've seen quite some upward pressure from uh, the retail lending arm. And okay. so I, I'm expecting quite their provisions to, to sort of face pressure as well as the NPLs as well. In as much as they might come down um, in the third quarter, I still expect to see some pressure because of that. Let's, let's, uh, let's leave it there. That's uh, a perfect capture of, of the sector. Thanks to my guest, Daniel Cuyo from Kingdom Securities. That's all from Cross Border Investing this week. Remember to follow me on Twitter. That's at Mudiba underscore Tepo. Uh, and send us, your thoughts the, send us your thoughts on the show using the hashtag CBI. From me and the team, goodbye.